Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Patrick Smith. I'm a uh, sales manager over here at Foundation, and I appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, today for the webinar, we are going to uh, to touch on some of the high points of Foundation software. So the the purpose of uh, of today's overview is just just to provide insight on kind of who we are, what we do, some of the the features within our system that uh, some of the more attractive features in our program, really for anybody that is considering a change in accounting software, if you're curious to learn a little bit more about what we have to offer and and why companies would uh, would potentially switch over to us. Um, so this will be pretty educational. And again, whether you're looking for a, a change actively or you're just kind of curious to see what we're all about, um, this will uh, will provide some insight. So it looks like we've got some folks rolling in here. I I'm going to get started. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and, and get moving here. Um, the the chat menu on the left or on the right side of the screen. So you you're all in listen only mode. You'll be able to hear me. I'm not going to be able to hear you. So again, this will be pretty high level overview. But if there are any kind of questions out there, feel free to put them into the the chat, into the question section on the GoToWebinar control panel. And uh, some of those I might be able to address on the fly. Uh, chances are we will probably save those for later, depending on the volume that comes over. So with that in mind, um, anybody that's not familiar with Foundation, just to give you all an idea, um, we do construction accounting, we do project management, we do mobile timekeeping. So we are really the, the back end office on the accounting side of things, um, as well as the, the, the field management. The majority of companies that do come our way are either coming off of QuickBooks and looking to get into something more industry specific, um, or those that are on older software, you know, maybe, maybe some legacy systems that are out there uh, that you're looking to get into, uh, maybe a little just more up-to-date technology, flexibility, ease of use, and whatnot. So, um, so that's where we really would step in, um, give everybody an idea of how we work as a company. Um, it's all in-house. So we wrote our software, we develop it in-house, we sell, we train, we support. So, um, so it's a direct relationship. A lot of folks buy into our culture. They like how we work. They like our style. Pick up the phone, call us if you need anything. Um, again, this is all direct uh, for any of those that, that were to potentially come our way. All right, so we've got five topics to cover today. Um, first one is the number one reason that why we exist as a company. It is live WIP and job cost reporting. So I'm going to jump into Foundation. Um, this is the main menu that you would see when you log into our program. We've got the base modules up top, which are the general accounting modules. We've got the additional modules here in this middle section, uh, which a user can pick and choose depending on the functionality that they need. And then under project control, these would be more on the operation side of things. So I'm going to jump into what we call the executive dashboard. This will give everybody some perspective on the reporting, particularly the ability to drill down into greater and greater detail. Um, so again, this is all live job cost reporting. The gist here behind the dashboard, let's start on a very summarized level, and then let's drill down into greater and greater detail. This is all about the drill down. So this example, you see on the left here, we've got totals. On the right, we've got each active job that account for those totals. In this example, you can see I'm running about 9 million in active jobs or contracts. It shows that we've billed about 6 million against those contracts. We're able to see an estimated versus actual cost, as well as estimated versus actual gross profit. Right side again is read to each of those jobs individually. If I click this button that says view report, that drills down to your WIP schedule. Um, there's a few different versions of the WIP throughout our program. This is the one that's built into our dashboard, pretty simple WIP. Uh, you can see percentage of completion, over billings, under billings. Um, so regardless of which WIP is run through the system, just a few different ways to see the same numbers. This is all live data. So these WIP reports really the, the backbone of our system. Then from the WIP, you can keep digging. Any of these jobs you want to look into further, click the job number. That drills down into a summary of the particular job that you clicked into. The contract amount what's been billed against it, estimated cost, actual cost, gross margin, change orders, percentage of completion. You see where we're going with this. These are all numbers for that one job that we clicked into. Now for those out there that are looking to cost code, okay, I've got an estimated cost for this job, 449. 
actual cost 197. If I click the link that says job cost detail, here's a breakdown of various cost codes that account for that estimated versus actual. And these are only my examples. Um, you can customize codes, have as few or as many as you'd like. Some clients that we work with have hundreds of codes, others have five, six, seven codes. Some don't use codes at all, don't need that level of detail. So for those that do prefer to cost code, again, just know it's, it's customizable, it's alphanumeric. And then within the code, if I were to click this 2010 code as an example, now we're seeing the breakdown of labor for that code, material cost, subcontract cost. So these are what we call cost classes. They're also customizable, also alphanumeric, only examples that I'm showing here. With this being real-time data, a user always has the ability to drill down into that granular detail. Couple examples, labor, I've got 4,200 in labor cost. If I click labor, that is showing me all the transactions that fed directly in from payroll that account for labor within that code, within that job that we clicked into initially. So you're drilling down into that granular detail. Another example, if I go into material, this would show any material related transactions, in this case, a couple AP invoices. If I click either transaction number, here's the detail of that payable. And then with our document imaging module in mind, you could click this paperclip icon and that would allow the user to drill down into a copy of that material invoice, subcontract invoice, whatever type of transaction it is. So again, just to give everybody a, a feel for what our system is all about, this is what we're doing, this is what we specialize in, live job costing, WIP, cost codes, drill downs. Now, in addition to the dashboard, I'm gonna jump back to my main menu here. If we jump into reports under job costing, we will provide a number of what we call activity reports. So these are preloaded in addition to the dashboard, and I'll just pick off a couple randoms here. Let's say you run what we call status of contracts. Okay, so we run the status of contracts. This one's pretty simple. This is showing us active jobs, contract value, estimated cost, actual billing, the actual cost, cost to complete. So this one's getting into just some summarized data within each one of these jobs. Or if we go into see here if we go cost to complete by cost code this one will be pretty similar to what we saw on the dashboard this would show okay here's each one of those codes what did you budget were there any changes against that budget the revised amount here's your actual cost you can see we're over budget on this demolition cost code we can drill down into this 29,000 and that's going to show us all of the transactions that account for that 29,000 Again, similar to the dashboard, a couple different ways to get to those same numbers. And as an FYI, when a user runs a report, you've got a number of different sorting and filtering options. Okay, let's run that report by project manager, show me all the jobs that Dan is managing. Or run this report by geographic area, show me this report for all the jobs in Erie County or in Ohio, these are just my examples. So when a job is created, criteria can be entered against that job, and then a user would be able to run reports based on all that, uh, all that different criteria. Okay, so a little crash course on the job costing. Know that it's live, it is real time. Those numbers are feeding into the accounting entries, or from the accounting entries. No spreadsheets needed. And as an FYI, we are not a batch-driven system, meaning you don't need to post in accounts payable, for example, then into the general ledger, then against that job. It's always a single click. Those numbers are then feeding across the board. Okay, so job costs, WIP reports, number one feature here. Another attractive part of the program is certified payroll. Okay, so for those that are chasing prevailing wage jobs, working certified payroll, that is an automated process. Those reports would be generated directly through the program. So electronic, anybody out there that's required to submit electronic certified payroll into EMARS or LCP Tracker or any of these various uh, services that are out there, 
we have them built in. So you work a job for a city or a county and they use LCP tracker. There's no entry that you're doing into the LCP website or any of these other ones. You're just uploading a file that our system creates. Then you wipe your hands clean. That information is over to that particular website. And then whoever needs to download it can pull it from, from that respective site as well. So the point is file upload, no manual entry that's being done here to get those numbers into those respective websites. Otherwise, if you go to the printed option, then you can see here, this will print right out of the program. This example is your standard Department of Labor, WH347. So that's sort of the go-to format. The signature page we will generate as well. Now, any state-specific formats, and some agencies have their own as well, certain cities have their own, you know, even some universities have their own and whatnot. So um, anyone out there that needs more specific certified payer reporting, we've got a number of these reports that are built into the system. So whatever format you select, that's how it knows how to look in print. Now just picking one off random here, let's say it's the state of Delaware, you need that particular report, that'll look different than the federal. So again, just grabbed one randomly here, but these numbers are automatically filled in. From a pay rate standpoint, for anybody out there that is heavy prevailing wage, we have the ability to set up all of these prevailing wage rates. We've got the ability to set the fringe up. Also have the ability to auto reduce that fringe. So we're kind of getting into the guts here, pretty granular. Let's say that for those that are heavy certified payroll, okay, for Rick Stevens, you're contributing, let's say the equivalent of $5 an hour to medical, dental, any other benefits. So Rick works a prevailing wage job and he's got a $12 an hour fringe. It'll net that out to seven and pay him that difference. Hour later goes to a job with a $13 an hour fringe, nets that, out, that one out to eight and pays him that difference. So just another example of things that we can automate, the pay rates we can automate so users don't have to manually type rates in for prevailing wage. Um, and the, the fringe as well with that reduction of the fringe. Any union contractors that are out there, same logic. We would help set up all of the union rates, all of the benefits. These would be calculated as well. You can see this is my local six. Here's all my different trades with my hourly rate. Effective date, pretty handy here. This would allow you to put the rates in ahead of time, and then it knows when to kick those rates in based on the effective date. Also have the same capability with those benefits. So again, for the union contractor, here's my IB, IBEW Local 38, electrician trade, D for deduction, F for fringe. You know, it could be based on hours, percentages, fixed rates. So that this is our wheelhouse. The complexities on payroll, union, multi-union, prevailing wage, multi-state, that's really what our, our payroll module is all about. Okay, and I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit here with payroll in mind. So one of the items on our, our list to cover, our five features list that we're covering is mobile timekeeping. So that is something that is becoming very more common these days, a lot more of a comfort level with, uh, with time management out in the field. Now the, the mobile app itself, tough to show during a webinar here. Um, I'm gonna pull up a, a little PDF data sheet, kind of explain what our mobile app does. For anybody out there that does wanna take a closer look at the program, we'll get you on the calendar for more of live demo, show you what it's all about. A little bit easier to show the, the mobile piece on a one-on-one -on -one demo versus something like this. Uh, but what I'm getting at here is, we've got the time management, we call this WorkMax. So this allows for clocking in and out on job sites, GPS, geofencing, facial recognition. This is, okay, the employee clocks in on their own phone or maybe on a supervisor's device or maybe a, a central kiosk on the job site. It would compare their photo that it's taking, just takes a selfie, compares that to their profile picture, make sure it's them, make sure that, uh, that there's, no, uh, there's no buddy punching is what we call it. You know, their friends not clocking them in from across town. So the timepiece of our, our mobile app, very beneficial, verifies the employees on the job site, make sure it's actually them. 
We do have asset capture as well. So for those that are heavy equipment tracking, okay, let's say in addition to the mobile timekeeping and, and the hours, you want to pull in equipment hours in addition to that labor. So a user can clock in to a job, to a cost code, tell the app what piece of equipment they're using. Then it would feed that labor into the payroll module. It would feed the equipment usage into our equipment module in, in the foundation accounting. And then, of course, everything is expensed to the job. Job costs it out without any of that manual entry to get both that labor and equipment expense to the job and to the cost code. Also have a form feature. This is pretty cool. So you can customize forms within our mobile app. The example that I always use is an injury report. Okay, so let's say that you want to capture whether or not an employee was injured, what happened. They can take a picture of their injury. They can upload it. You can get a signature on that, uh, that injury form as well. Maybe you want the employee to sign it. Maybe you want the project manager or the supervisor to sign it. So the, the form piece is really flexible, a lot of customization. This is capturing more than just those labor and equipment hours. This is getting these forms created out in the field. And then lastly with our mobile app um, is what we call Insight, which is a production tool. For those that are heavy construction, looking to track quantity production, this would tell you how many hours did you put into this particular task? How many quantities did you capture? Did you complete based on the unit of measure? Okay, maybe you're measuring so many cubic yards of dirt that you're moving. Then it would calculate unit cost. Here's what it's costing you per cubic yard. Um, that would capture production as well. Here's how many cubic yards you're moving per hour. So, so that would apply to the, the heavy construction companies that are out there that are, again, quantity driven. Okay. So jumping back into the accounting, and real quick before we get into the last two items, I'm going to pop over to the questions, see if there's anything that came over, see if we can maybe knock a couple of those out. All right, question came over, how many pictures are allowed at a time? N no real limit. So yeah, if, if you just want to take photos, you know, it's one of those you probably want to avoid uploading a thousand photos. You know, this is more, okay, here's a form take a picture, upload it, then it's gonna show up on that form. So um, so yeah, and not really a file size limit. Yeah, it's, it's all based on bandwidth and upload download kind of speed, which would be on more on your side of things. So, so yeah, can you store unlimited files? Sure. Do we encourage you to upload a million 10 gigabyte files? No, it's, it's just one of those, yeah, use it as a receptacle. But, um, but yeah, it's pretty rare that somebody will you know, bring in thousands and thousands of files. Okay, the other two items that we have on our list are specialty billings and project management. So I'm gonna start with the, the billing side of things. Um, a lot of folks out there billing on a schedule of value. So the AIA, that is built directly into our accounts receivable module. So everything that you see on this general tab, this is the information that goes to the front page to the G702. And then on the billing tab, that's where you can see the schedule of value breakdown. And you notice I'm on application one. So I have not billed for this particular job. You can bill by dollars, calculates percentage. You can bill by percentage, calculates dollars. Retainage, that is another thing that we specialize in. So when a job is set up, you could tag a, per, a percentage for retention. It would know what to hang on to. In this case, it's pulling 10% from that job. And just as a visual here, FYI, I'm gonna shortcut to my aging report real quick here. You can see we've got a favorites menu on the left. So with retainage in mind, and this is really for the QuickBooks users that are out there, no workarounds for retainage. You can see on the aging, 30, 60, 90, separate column for retainage, doesn't require a separate entry doesn't show as a current due balance on the aging and goof up the aging. This is a true retainage process here, keeps those numbers on their own, in their own column on that aging report. Okay, so going back to the schedule of value, let's say we're, gonna, we're ready to build this 92,000. We'll go ahead and save it and then print it. And this is just like we saw those certified payroll reports a little while back. Also goes right onto a blank piece of paper. So here's front page 702, continuation page 703. You could always PDF this if you wanted to send electronically or you could physically print it. 
And what is convenient about this is there's no separate entry to get that billing on the books. There's no third entry to get the, the retention on the books. Just click the post icon up top here. That auto generates the receivable, tells you one invoice has been created and posted, or it could be multiple invoices at the same time. So that invoice is on the aging with that retention held separately. General ledger is also updated job revenue is updated as well. Another good example of the integration between these modules, all those numbers are feeding across the board, hitting the financials, hitting the job as revenue without having to go to multiple modules to, to get those numbers in. All right, then then say it's a month later, ready for the next pay app, pull that same job back up. Now we are on application two and all of our previous number, or our completed numbers have shifted over to previous. Now you're ready to move forward with the next pay application or in the event that they rejected app one. Okay, let's say they didn't like that 34,000 for site work. Click this rollback button. Tell the system which application you want to roll back to. In this case, we're going to go back to app one. You sure you want to do this? Yes. What happens here is it is reversing that receivable. So it's taking it off the aging. It's reversing the ledger, debits and credits and it's removing that 92,000 in revenue from that job. So all those numbers are backed out. Now we're back to app one. Previous numbers have shifted back over to completed. Change what you have to change, resubmit it. Now the audit reports would show that original 92,000, the negative 92,000, the new amount of 89,000 in this case. The aging, however, stays clean. The only thing you see on the aging is that new amount of 89, not seeing that original, and then the negative $92,000 credit, bunch of negatives on the aging, don't have to deal with, true reversal, not a credit entry that you'd have to offset against that original. All right, so a little crash course here. For those that are unit driven, more on the civil construction side of things, unit price billing, same logic here as we had with the AIA, with the difference being you can enter quantities instead of just percentages or dollars. So for those that are quantity driven, line items can be imported in, plug in that quantity that's been completed, and then I'll give you a peek here to create a pay estimate. You could use one of our standard formats, like this one here is pretty widely used. Here's all your items, unit of measure, bid quantity, unit price. Here's what you're billing on this pay estimate. Here's what you've built to date for the life of that job. Or those that need a unit-based AIA, just pick AIA out of the dropdown. Front page would look like your standard AIA, and then your 703 continuation would have those items and quantities and unit prices rather than just the percentages and dollars like we saw on, on that standard AIA. All right, so for fixed contract billings, Standard AIA, unit price billing, you know, of course, regular invoices you could just enter right into the program if you just need to generate a just simple invoice. For those that are time and material heavy, this is a pretty handy module to automate the calculation of the billing and to create the invoice itself. So the just behind time and material is in the setup, we can define our, our markups and our cost rates. So it could be standard, everybody gets billed the same rates. Most have customer specific rates. Some companies out there have job specific rates. So let's just say you're a T&M client or a T&M contractor and you work for Contractor Steel as one of your T&M clients. Now for that particular client, my labor is billed by trade. Okay, so I've got my electricians are billed at X amount per hour and my foremen are billed out at X amount per hour. So pretty common method to bill by labor trade for the time material contractors that are out there. Each employee could have their own billing rate, different cost codes could have billing rates. So the point here is you get these rates predefined, whether it's hourly labor or for material, maybe it's a markup, percent markup on those material expenses, Subcontract, same thing. Equipment, you know, maybe you have hourly rates, maybe you have a daily rate, monthly rate. So 
getting these rates defined, that is really the key to this module. And then, okay, let's say that you work that job, your labor hours are hitting that job, equipment's hitting that job, materials hitting that job. This module would then gather all that information up and do the math. So if I come in here to gather, I'm gonna tell the system I wanna bill for this job, for this month's worth of activity. It's looking at that job, it's gonna pick up all that activity, it's gonna do the math based on those rates that we just saw for that customer, create the invoice for X amount of dollars. Now, before we send anything to the client, you could run what we call a worksheet. Let's review, let's make sure that everything looks good here. So the worksheet isn't anything that you'd send out, the billing itself you would, the worksheet gives an opportunity to review, hey, if we need to make any kind of changes, we can adjust on the fly. So here's all those labor transactions that it picked up. How many hours did they work? What are you billing per hour? Then I've got my material, 10% markup, subcontract, 12% markup. You see at the bottom here, it'll tell you, here's what that job costs you. Here's what you're billing out to the client by way of those predefined rates. So if you do notice anything that needs to be changed, come into this edit screen, make those changes on the fly. So if I come into edit, I can tell the system, let's get in here and adjust some of those labor hours or adjust some of those subcontract rates. Now again, this isn't going in backwards. If I adjust labor, it's not gonna change anything retroactively on the payroll side of things. This is just changing billing on the fly before you send the invoice to the customer. All right, otherwise leave it as is. If everything looks good, we can leave it as is then you can either print or email that billing and the billing itself would look how you want it to look. So going back to the menu here in the bottom left are what we call the genies. These are neat little customizable tools that are unique to our software. One of those being the form genie that a user can customize billing templates, purchase orders, change orders. This is all drag and drop. Where do you wanna place your company logo? Where do you wanna place your company name? getting into fonts, colors, bold, italics, like you see in Word or Excel. Just don't have to do this through Word or through Excel. This is built right into our program. All right, so another crash course on the billing. There's a variety here, the AIA, the standard invoicing, the unit price, the time material. Everybody's different, everybody has their, their own unique needs. Uh, if anything, we can accommodate a, a variety here. All right, so we are motoring through. Last item on our list to cover is the project management side. So a little, little history, a little background here. You notice we've got this module that we call project management. This is what we used to use to track RFIs, to track submittals. Did a pretty good job. It wasn't a, a terrible module by any stretch, um, but there's just not a ton of phone and tablet access, and that's what really everybody is after these days. You know, let's not have the project managers have to log into the accounting to get to this information. So what we did a few years ago is we scrapped this module and we created an app that we call Project HQ. So Project HQ, this is directly connected to the accounting program behind the scenes, meaning if a job is set up in foundation, it's gonna show up here. If a change order is submitted through Project HQ, it's feeding back into foundation. So it's a two-way street behind the scenes but it does not require the project managers to log into the accounting program and eat up accounting licenses. This is where they live. They don't even have to know the accounting exists behind the scenes. So if I'm a project manager, I log in, I've got a dashboard of how many jobs I'm managing. Do I have any documents that are overdue? We've got a scheduling component where you can allocate resources and assign employees and equipment items to different jobs. Now, if I tap into job 12, this is showing us a dashboard of that particular job. Okay, daily log entries. Were there delays today? Do we wanna upload photos? Now again, this will be more for daily log type photo upload. I mentioned the forms on the mobile timekeeping side of things. That's really just to get basic forms. Like I mentioned, the injury form, you know, pretty common example. This would be uploading photos into an actual daily report, which I'll give you a peek at. If I go back to the main menu here, go to reports, this is where a user can run change order logs, PO logs, RFI logs, and so on. If I run the daily log summary, this would show activity for that particular day. So here's the job, were there any delays, what equipment was utilized, 
what labor was expensed that job, notes, visitors, weather conditions for those that work outdoors, we can auto capture. So we're attached to weather services. It'll populate the weather conditions. You can schedule that to run at like eight o'clock, noon and four o'clock, and it would populate. I'll show you on the next page here. It would show all those weather conditions automatically generated. Here are a few pictures that I've uploaded into this daily log. So, so again, going back into the dashboard of that job, that's where those pictures can be uploaded. A lot of this stuff would fill in automatically, like labor that would just feed in by way of those hours against that job through the timekeeping, whereas notes, yeah, user can just throw notes in uh, right into that daily log straight off the app here. Now, if I go to work management, this is where users on the field, couple things. If you want them to pencil copy their AIA, they can do that. Again, they don't need to log into the accounting program. They can just get their pencil copy in. This would feed into the accounting program, allow somebody on the accounting side to review it, make changes, do what they need to do, then submit it. Um, documents, this is where a user can track RFIs, submittals. Now in this example, I've got five RFIs against this job. If I open up my account, it shows us the description of each RFI, who it was sent to, what's the due date, What's the status? If I open up RFI one, now we're getting into the guts of it. Why does that RFI exist? What's the question? Who sent it? Who received it? Now we do have drawing management as well. If I come up to this attachments tab, this is where a user can access things like site plans and they can put notes on, they can annotate, they can mark drawings up. So, uh, so again, scratching the surface here, but, uh, but anybody out there that needs any kind of drawing management, here's a real simple site plan. Now, this is where we can get in here and put notes on it, mark it up, stamp it, you know, put signatures on it. Like I said, definitely scratching the surface here, but you all get the idea. That is really what this thing is all about is the, the management of those different drawings and, um, and the status of those documents. Same logic with change orders. Okay, a user could create a request for change, convert that to a formal change order. That formal change order would then feed into the accounting program, update the contract value, update the WIP schedule. Uh, so again, another example of the integration, originate that change in the field, let it feed in. Nobody's doing that, that separate entry to get that change into the accounting. Um, and then this last tab, you see collaboration. This is where users can access those files that have been uploaded. So I can go straight into that RFI and look up that, that spec sheet, or I can just come in here and find it. Uh, we do have email tracking as well. So emails would log in here as they're sent and received. If, um, if anybody out there doesn't want to dig through Outlook to find all these emails that are being sent related to that job, just pop in here. It's all centralized. Here's any email that was launched by way of the app against that particular job. All right, so th this app here, it's pretty much a demo in itself. Um, like I mentioned before, if there's anybody that wants to take a closer look here, you just reach out, we get you on the calendar, more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. You know, like I said, the purpose of this is just to give you a little taste of what we can do, but, uh, but yeah, no problem for anybody that wants to, to dig a little bit deeper. Okay, I'm gonna give another look to the questions, see if any of those came in, and then we will wrap it up here. All right, question, can you default the signature for a notary on the AIA? That we don't do. That's a slippery slope legality-wise. So yeah, that is something that uh, you'd have to export it, get it notarized or print it either way. All right, uh, question came over, is this uh, gonna be recorded? Yes, everybody's gonna get a copy of this. So you'll see an email that comes over and, uh, and yeah, you'll have a link. This is definitely being recorded. Another question, is there a Gantt chart within Project HQ? No, the Gantt chart is by way of our scheduling module here in Foundation. That's where it, it's centralized. So um, so yeah, user would, uh, would come right into the accounting program to get to that Gantt chart. All right, I think there might be a couple others. Okay. Okay, a question came over about accrual, and I'm assuming that is, are we a cash versus accrual? Yes, yeah, so we, we're an accrual system. Financials can be configured 
to to run on a cash basis or to display on a cash basis. But uh, but yeah, you know, really the guts of our our ledger side of things. Yeah, this is an accrual system. And to give everybody an idea of you know, maybe when somebody would come over to us. Okay, if there's a QuickBooks user that's out there that's pushing four or five million, that's about when we see, hey, I'm I'm pushing QuickBooks to its limits. I'm breaking it. It's just not keeping up. I'm spending hours on the reporting side of things. That's where somebody would typically come over to us. Every now and again, we'll see somebody on QuickBooks that's doing 10, 15 million. That turns into a bit of a slippery slope. Um, you know, again, it's just not accustomed to, or not designed to accustom or to customize something like that. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where we'd step in. Or, like I said, if there's anybody on these legacy programs that are sort of that DOS-based environment behind the scenes, yeah, you, you come over to us, and then you're getting into something a little bit newer. So with all that in mind, yeah, most are running accrual because they really have to when they get to that point from a, a volume standpoint. But we can't, we can't accommodate the cash basis financials as well. All right. Okay, question came over, what is the maximum annual revenue? I guess in other words, would you outgrow our system by any point? Not really. It, you know, the, the starting point is that, call it that five to 10 million range, which even that, I mean, we've got clients that are doing two, three million, they're out there. Um, but uh, but yeah, the the flip side of that, you know, you get into that three, 400 million range, Sure, there, there might be some things that you need to get into, like a custom Oracle type system. But to, to give everybody an idea of our typical client, figure anywhere on that five to 10 million range, upward of 7,500 million range, that's about our bread and butter. So we consider ourselves a mid range system. We're not QuickBooks, plug and play, but we're not the six figure type system either. We're, we're kind of jammed right in the middle. All right. There's some other questions out there. Let me see if I can. Okay. Yeah, one of them came over an example of the certified peer report. Um, I'll give you a peek here. Those you'll see on that recording. So I mentioned the electronic and the printed option. So, so yeah, uh, if you're looking to run that certified report, just to pull it up here. Yeah, we looked at the WH347, that's that federal form. Um, so this would automatically generate and then uh, all those state specific forms as well for anybody that needs more of a state form instead of that federal. Yep, so very much auto-generated, nothing, uh, nothing manual. And I, I guess one other thing to point out in payroll, just as an FYI, very doable to run a full payroll through our software. So printing checks and doing direct deposits and doing W-2s at the end of the year. Um, for those of you that are somewhat familiar with us, um, you might know we have a sister company here called Payroll for Construction that works as a payroll service. So processing the payroll, getting the employees paid, taking care of those taxes. So that's always an option for those that potentially would use our program, but don't want to process that payroll and don't want to use somebody third party like an ADP or a paychex. Yeah, we've got the payroll service that's fully integrated. Now, definitely an option for those that don't want to go through that legwork. All right, very good. Um, so yeah, let, let's go ahead and wrap up here. Um, if anybody does have questions, reach out to me directly. So be on the lookout for that email. You're gonna see the recording come over. I'm not sure when that'll go out, maybe later today, maybe tomorrow, uh, but uh, that'll come over to your inboxes and then everybody's gonna have my contact info. So if there's questions, concerns, anybody that was, does wanna set up a time to take a closer look, just let me know, we'll find a spot on the calendar. Um, otherwise, I appreciate everybody's time here. I will uh, let you get back to your day. Thanks for taking a look and uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.